Um, <laughs> shall we get my first guest out? Yeah. I think we'd better before he starts hosting a show in there. Will you please welcome Mr. Jimmy Carr, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Bless you. How lovely to see you. Nice to see you. How Thank are you for you? coming back on the show. Oh, I love it. Now, uh, got Christmas all planned? Are you, you geared up? Do you enjoy Christmas? Do you have everything ready? Uh, I don't have much ready. I'm going away this year. Where are you going to? I'm going to go to Dubai. Why would you go to Dubai for Christmas? Because it's sandy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going, I just thought it'd be nice to get a bit of a break. And I'm working right the way up to sort of the last day. And, then and you'll be working, what, doing stand up comedy? Yeah, yeah, doing stand up. Not really work then, is it? Not proper work, it's not no. like a proper job. The people but... at home watching have to get up like me and get their hands dirty. Like you? Yeah. You have to pop in and, and drink some goose fat. <laughs> That's yeah. a diet book no one's going to buy. OK. Um, now, you know, congratulations uh, in order, Jimmy Carr, ladies and gentlemen. If you watch the Comedy Awards this week over on ITV1 and 2, uh, Jimmy Carr picked up a Comedy Award for, was it Best Live Stand-Up Tour, is that right? Yeah, I think so, Well, yeah. congratulations. That's well, thanks a... very much indeed. I was it was presented to you, because they have a... Someone comes up to give the award to people, and it was presented to you by uh, Sean Ryder, ex of the Happy Mondays, is that right? Yeah, he, okay. seemed, he seemed fine. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed fine. Did he, did he know who you were, do you think? I don't think he knew who he was. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone who I was. But it was nice. It was nice to it's see nice him to get, He's kind of a hero, actually. I think he's an amazing lyricist. So it's yeah. nice to get it from so you were him. We a had fan, a little chat. Yeah, you were I'm a, a fan, fan of the Happy Mondays. Mondays. Yeah. Okay, all right. Great band. Uh, okay, and, uh, and now on the evening itself, I thought the, the problem was um, it was, a, it was a fun show, a lovely evening. I think everyone was a bit upstaged by the fact, I don't know if you saw it, there was a snake on the stage. Mm -hmm. Uh, they came on with a snake and it was about 20 foot long. Well, the odd thing about it was you came out with a snake and it almost immediately fell. It, was, it felt to me very much like you'd gone, right, TV's funniest bloopers, that's 200 quid in the bank no, I, I, every no. time they show it. And they'll be showing that until we're dead. I'd never frankly. seen, I didn't know, I knew the guy was bringing a snake on, I didn't know how big the yeah, snake, snake was. You weren't expecting that. No, I was expecting one maybe about four feet long. I thought ITV were a bit panicked because Ant and Deck were right down the front. <laughs> and that is bite size for a snake, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly the right kind of morsel they go for. And let's face it, that's all they've got. Yeah, pretty much. He would have eaten their winter schedule. Um, <laughs> What? That's not. That's fair enough. <laughs> Let's have a look. This is a kid. Um, <laughs> That's nice. Uh, you know why I was upset? Though? Can I say something? Can I share something? I was very upset because they promised me the guy was going to turn up with two animals. Okay. Go on, what, what was the second? Okay. And, they said, and I was so excited about the two animals because I like snakes. Anyway. I wasn't worried about it, but I was so excited about it and it didn't. And when they turned up and told me he didn't have the other animal, I got in a bit of a sulk. What right? was the other animal? A penguin. <laughs> Are you sure they didn't turn up with two and the snake didn't eat it? It did look like he'd just been fed, didn't he? But I thought, wouldn't that be great to have a penguin? I didn't get to meet the penguin. There was a penguin out there. And even they said, Madonna's coming. I said, I don't want Madonna, I want a penguin. That's <laughs> him. I was like a baby. As opposed to now. <laughs> OK, now, <laughs> I have had the pleasure of seeing Jimmy Carr live. He's one of the funniest live comedians working in the country right now. Uh, and, you, and you know what I like about it? You obviously love doing it. I mean, it, and I don't know whether that's it's, because you, you came to it late. I get the feeling... It's my best thing, It's just the best thing in the world. Going, and, you know, making TV shows is, is great fun, but it's, it's very much kind of a team thing. There's loads of people involved in making a TV show, yeah. and it feels very much, if you're the presenter, like you're made head boy on the first day. Everyone's super nice to you and, and kind of brings your stuff and, and does things, and it's, it's great. But going I mean, out there on your own, there's no substitute. It's just amazing. Genuinely, I do love the fact that you, that you do really appreciate the success that you've had. You do seem to really relish it. I do absolutely love it. I'm still, you know, starstruck by the whole thing and kind of slightly amazed at my luck. It feels like, kind of at any stage now, someone's going to go, I'm sorry, there's been a terrible admin error. Could you f*** off? <laughs> so, did you know then, and I'm always curious about this, because, I, you know, I am always in awe of people who can write material, because I don't really write my own material. I take full credit for you it, do but I don't really write all it. stuff. But, um, I mean, more, when, you know, when you sit down and you've got to write jokes... Yeah. That, that must have been, especially initially when you first began, that must have been quite something, it must have been quite a challenge, quite a daunting prospect. Well, I think it starts off uh, as kind of uh, a love of jokes, right. uh, just really liking the kind of wordplay of them. And I think that might have something to do with being quite sort of dyslexic and not really kind of... I didn't learn to, uh, to write until I was about ten. Uh, and, and so kind of wordplay and stuff kind of, it, it just still fascinates me. I absolutely love it. So messing around with words, I, I've just always found kind of just an amazing sort of thing. And so when you start sort of doing that and you get really into it, it kind of almost like writing jokes becomes like doing a crossword puzzle. You get kind of really into the kind of mechanics of, well, there's something in there and you're kind of mining for it. OK, well, we're talking about, we've sort of stumbled on this, but uh, Jimmy has written a book on the subject of jokes, which, and you've written this one called Lucy Greaves, and she isn't a comedian, is she? I don't no, not a comedian at all. She's a friend of mine from, uh, from college. 
Lucy, yeah. I think she's she's on the back of the book somewhere. God bless her. And it's not. It's, I thought it would be when, when I heard you were going to do this. I thought it'd be like a Christmas cashy book with lots of photographs of Jimmy smiling on stage and you know, and then maybe a pull-out section. But no, it's an actual. It's a proper book about. It's kind of it's kind of a popular science book about jokes because I sort of think they're really important things that often get ignored. There's loads of books about comedians and there's loads of books about sketch comedy and, and kind of the personalities within it. But there's very little about jokes and they're kind of the building blocks of humour. And I just I, I I think they're fascinating. Okay, and you've got how many jokes? There's actually jokes in the. I mean, it's. Well, it's the idea was to, on as a sweetener, as a sweetener to get people to actually get through the book, we put a joke at the bottom of every page. Okay. Because we know that people are inherently lazy and don't want to read a book. There's DVDs around. <laughs> so they'll read a page and then there's a joke at the bottom. Yeah, and there's some great jokes. And, but there's a lot of... Now, how many jokes in there are from you and how many from other people that you've seen? I, I put about... Uh, about maybe 50 of my own in and about right. 400 from, from others. Okay, and uh, did anyone, obviously I know you know a lot of comedians and you meet a lot of comedians on the road when you're working, were any of the people that you met, were they upset that you didn't include them, said why didn't you put one of my jokes in or was everyone well, our, happy? Well, our, our, our friend David Baddiel was a bit annoyed I didn't put any of his in, but you know, and maybe if he's written some better jokes. <laughs> There's some great jokes in it, though. There are, I mean, you know, just some, some great jokes, and you, I didn't realise that these were people necessarily who'd, who'd originate them. Some well, it's, it's, it's interesting, because we went back, and there's, there's lots of jokes from kind of amazing comedians that are around today, and, you know, people that you will have heard of from the kind of 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. But there's also quite a lot of pub jokes in there, just kind of jokes that have always been around. And well, there's one here. Those. Is this one of yours? This is one, like, from a Christmas cracker. What's, what's short, green, and goes camping? A boy sprout. <laughs> that is, there's a chapter on children's jokes. It's oh, not that? a retarded book. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of your jokes. There's loads of great uh, kids' how, jokes. Uh, are is this a kids' go How do you kill a circus? Go for the juggler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's also I got I got kicked out of the scouts for eating a brownie. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a kids' joke. <laughs> No, it's a Ross Noble joke. It's a very good joke, though. And when you were writing the book, uh, what, what are the best jokes do you think in it? What are the best jokes that you've encountered? Which are the, the funniest jokes and ones which are almost always guaranteed to, to get a laugh? Well, one of my favourite jokes of all time is Irishman walks into a library, says, fish and chips, please. The librarian says, this is the library. He says, sorry, fish and chips, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just think that's structurally almost perfect. That's great. But is that still acceptable, though? Because what you're saying there, really, is that an Irish person is not very intelligent. Right? And we're not allowed to say that kind of thing anymore. Well, partly because it's not actually true of all Irish people. There well, are we... some who aren't very intelligent, but obviously from all cultures. So, but that's an old-fashioned kind of approach, yeah. isn't it? No, I mean, there's a chapter that deals with that in the book and kind of what's offensive and what isn't. And it's very interesting when you go around the world. So in, in America, that would be a Polish joke. Uh, and in the UK, it's an Irish joke. In Ireland, it would be a Kerry joke. And, and everyone's got those little things. And it's, the, um, it's, it's kind of the merry men of Gotham is where it comes from. But originally. do you think, uh, is it still OK to tell that kind of joke, do you think? Do you draw the line on that sort of material? No, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. I mean, the thing about kind of what's acceptable and what isn't acceptable is it depends, is, is, is the answer. I mean, it's rather a boring answer. But it depends. It depends who's telling it. It depends if there's, if there's venom in it. And are there certain jokes which almost always uh, annoy people or irritate people or get the wrong response that, that people should just avoid? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think any joke where you have to look around before you tell it, you shouldn't be telling. You know, anything that you go, oh, I've just checked that, OK, there's none of them there, right, you know, don't, don't tell that joke. That's yeah. the rule. If, if there's someone in, 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 you know, in a wheelchair and you think, oh, I bet not tell that joke, or if there's a blind person in you say, you know, I don't want to tell that one, then you shouldn't have told it in the first place. Deaf people, it's not a problem, though, is it, really? Yes, yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all about the deaf. What is it about being blind that makes you want to walk the dog the whole time? <laughs> Shall I tell you some more jokes? I'll tell you some more jokes. OK. I'm quite a modern man. I've got no problem buying tampons. But apparently, they're not a proper present. <laughs> Uh, a dog is for life, not just for Christmas, so do be careful at the office party. <laughs> what do you think of that, sisters? I worry about my nan. She's alone in the house and she falls. Does she make a sound? <laughs> <laughs> do you, for example, because I sometimes talk about my personal life and I get in trouble yeah. right at home, okay? Because I say things that perhaps should remain personal between my wife and I, and I happen to think, no, I think you should share everything with the world. Okay. including those Polaroids, which I would like back, by the way. But anyway, uh, and I was uh, asking people uh, a little while ago whether or not, and I'd be interested in your opinion on this, when you're making love to a woman, okay, and I'm assuming you have, <laughs> right, during the act of lovemaking, there is almost always a time when the lady will shut her face. Uh, not her face. Oh, <laughs> shut her face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't done it that much either. <laughs> Shut your face, I'm working here. No, it's not like that. There's a, there's a stage when you're making love to a woman where they stop talking. 
Tell us no. more, Jonathan. No. There's a stuff when you're making love to a woman. Feels like two 14-year-old boys talking about girls they don't really know. Yeah. I've heard it's like a makeshift hand. Well, I was told, I was told. I was told to practice cunnilingus by putting your tongue in an orange. Oh my god, she needs to see a gynecologist and quickly. That was a man who told me. A tramp. A tramp told you that. <laughs> Just shouted randomly. Go on, when, you, when you're making love to a woman, they close their eyes. That's what we've got when to. You, when you're making love to a woman, there will be a time when they close their eyes and keep them shut for quite a while. Now, I'm curious as to whether you think that is because you have transported them to a wonderland of pleasure. <laughs> so great, so intense, they can't bear reality. It can't coexist with this incredible pleasure. It's like I'm riding on a rainbow, for Christ's sake. I don't want to look out and see tomorrow's washing. I'm loving this. I'm loving what you're doing to me. This is unbelievable. And you know what? It's <laughs> this, a sensory what... overload. I can't take in touch and sound as well. I'm just enjoying white soul. <laughs> is that what's going on? Or are they thinking, look at his big, fat, ugly f***ing face. Because <laughs> when I'm above now, I'm quite old. Look, look at this. Imagine me bearing down on that. So that's all going. Look at that. It's like a bulldog. And I'm bad enough. Imagine what David Dickinson's like. Well, you... A, I feel like I'm being groomed. <laughs> B, this is the kind of conversation that internet chat rooms were built for. <laughs> See, yeah, I, I, I do actually agree. I think women close their eyes because of the happy face. The because, happy face? Well, men at the end of sex, on the vinegar stroke, shall we say, just as you're about to arrive, you tend to have a, a happy face. Men, women, when they orgasm, look beautiful and serene. I've seen it in magazines and films. <laughs> but, but men... And they just... Men, when they, they orgasm... Just go... oh. <laughs> the, the man tends to look like, like he's drinking vinegar through his eyes. Can we have an example of this? Oh, <laughs> kind of, it, I think men, generally, when they Do come... Do that again, will you? They look like a turtle shitting. <laughs> hey, look. Hold on. Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's, it's why that threesome is out of the question, John. Okay. I don't want to see your happy face. Have you ever... I just have, bearing over. Oh. Have you ever had a threesome? No. Okay. Where, 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 where was that going? Well, you just <laughs> mentioned threesome. I was curious. Look, Don's in now, but he's had a sevensome or whatever the word was. <laughs> he's probably had a ninesome. He's probably up to double figures. I don't think he's ever made love to just one lady. It'd be a waste, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to be drawn on the subject. That's a yes, then. Um, all right, let's have a look at uh, Jimmy live, uh, as I think you've worked out already. He's a very funny man. Jimmy, lovely to see you again. Uh, the book, I can hardly recommend. I, I browsed the book. I haven't read it cover to cover, but it's full of some great jokes, and it's also, uh, I think, some very sound theories on humour. Strange that you would say that, as you've got a quote on the back. Well, I gave you the quote not having read the book. <laughs> Matter of fact, we should be honest, you wrote the quote for me. <laughs> Seriously, he rang me up and said, will you read my book? I said, I'm a bit busy right now. He said, can I put your name on the back? I said, fine. He said, do you mind me saying... It's a good quote. You'll enjoy this. A joke but that makes you think about why you're laughing brilliant. I said, fine, bung it on. Ladies <laughs> 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 and gentlemen, Mr Jimmy Carr. Thanks, man. Thank you, Jimmy. Well done.